It's yours. Okay, thank you. So, hello everyone, my name is Eugene Yang. So I will be presenting this paper, TAR on Social Media, a framework for online content moderation. This is the joint work with Dave Lewis from Reveal Data and Ophia Frieder from Georgetown University. Okay, so social media nowadays has become a part of our daily life from posting our memories to like uh, sharing opinions. However, like any other platform that carry user-generated content, misuses such as hate speech and cyberbullying also appear on these platforms. Even though there are community standards or terms of services for these social media, they were usually loosely enforced or relied on user feedback to report for remo removing inappropriate content. So as a result, cyberbullying becomes one of more and more common in the last several years. Horrible tragedies happened and social media started to take more action in moderating the platforms, either based on their wills or being forced by governments. And not just cyberbullying, general offensive languages or hate speech has driven our society to be more polarized. Other issues such as misinformation, copyright violations, or any other forms of violating the terms of use also demand more attention from the platform providers. These inappropriate contents are not static, but changing over time and in, culture, in different cultural contexts, which require massive human labor in reviewing and moderating. So the goal for this platform becomes to remove all or most of the content that violates the terms of use. This is usually called content moderation. Even though we can spend all day debating about what should be removed, but I believe we can all agree on there are some, there are things that should be removed. However, this objective poses a challenge for classic classification models which is the precision and recall trade-off. We want to retrieve most of the inappropriate content, namely high recall, but the precision is usually lower than desires. Maybe not as low as this, but this will be lower, this will be lower than what we can have with other recall targets. So this objection, objectives will result in a large cost for human to review the content after classification model flags them as inappropriate. Ideally, we want to reduce this cost. So to make it more concrete, we want to achieve high recall for reviewing while minimizing the cost, which, which is the wasted effort of reviewing appropriate or legit content. And this is actually high recall retrieval. And formally, a high recall retrieval is to minimize the reviewing cost of fulfilling a recall target. In our experiment, we set the recall target to be 80%, but it can be any value between zero and one. Higher recall targets do not fundamentally change the behavior, but just naturally require higher cost to achieve. So other, type, uh, other typical high recall retrieval applications are like electronic discovery for legal cases or e-discovery in short, medical system ad reviews, sunshine law requests, or corpus annotation. These applications all require to retrieve with a high recall target under a review budget. Software and framework has been developed for these applications especially for electronic discovery, which is a huge and, com and competitive market. And one of the most popular framework for high recall retrieval is technology assisted review or TAR in short. A TAR framework is an iterative process that continuously prioritizes the review based on the ranking model. The human expert then review the material and provide feedback to the ranking model. This iterative process assists the human expert to conduct the review more efficiently while ensure the relevant material are presented to the human for further investigation. 
if we use a supervised learning model as the ranker, this is actually an active learning process. We can prioritize the review not only by relevancy, but also uncertainty to improve the model more efficiently. In fact, these two heuristics are the most widely used strategies in higher practice. There are also other approaches like diversity sampling or sometimes even using some random sample to gain some statistically, statistical inference power. So the classic approach to apply to the content moderation or classification problem is passive learning, which is training the model based on a random sample or some handcrafted training set. When the context of the appropriate content shifts, either working on a different cultural region or different period of time, we might need to train, train another classification model. We could iteratively retrain the model and actively select training data based on the state of the model to make the training process more efficient, which is active learning. It, it focuses on training an effective model for future development. On the other hand, the main differences between TAR and active learning is objective. TAR starts, starts to review while the model is still training and focus on producing a producing an effect, efficient reviewing process, which jointly consider the effort of producing the model and the effectiveness of the model in a single reviewing project. So the main contribution of our work is to adapt our framework to the problem of content moderation. We evaluate the process based on the total reviewing cost which is the cost of reviewing the training document plus the cost of reviewing additional re unreviewed document at, at that iteration to, to fulfill the recall target. For example, let's say we have 10 ranked documents and the red ones are the positive. The first and the eighth are already in the training set. Based on this ranking, we need to review the top seven documents in order to reach 80% recall. So the total cost is two plus seven, which is nine. So we evaluate our TAR process on two data sets. The first one is the Wikipedia personal attack data set. It consists of 115,000 user comments from, on Wikipedia. Each of them is annotated by eight crowdsourcing workers into four types of attacks. We discard one of the types that has less than 20 comments for experiment, experimental purposes. We created a general attack class, which is the union of the four attacks. And at the left, it is an example of the comment. We make the marking in the presentation and the original collection comes with the clear text. So this comment is annotated as recipient tag and of course, general attack. The second collection is a cyberbullying data set extracted from AxFM, which is a forum people ask and answer question anonymously. It contains 61,000 conversation pairs. Some of them are question and answers, but a large portion of them are just pair of utterances. Trained annotators tag the role of the two actors. Each actor can be tagged as one or multiple roles. Each token is also being tagged as one or multiple types of cyberbullying. We create 23 binary classes based on these annotations. If one of the token in the conversation is being tagged as that type, we consider the entire conversation is in that class. And at the right, it is an example of the conversation. The tax is also in clear, uh, coming clear and the markings just for the presentation. The first actor is, is being tagged as the harasser and the second actor is the victim. And the conversation is con also contains defamation, curse, and general insult. Okay, so we present the total total reviewing costs at each of the, at each iteration, which correspond to the number of training documents. So the cost is the, is the number of training documents and the number of 
on review documents are required to reach 80% recall if we start reviewing from the top of the rank. We ran 20 replication of the top process on each binary class with a different pair of positive and negative documents as a seed document for the iterative process. 100 documents are selected and reviewed at each iteration. So a random sample, which is what people would do by default for a classification problem like this. This too improves over the manual review, which is manually review 80% of the collection to reach 80% recall. And as we, are, as we expected, with more random training documents, the total cost would decrease, which indicates that the benefit of reviewing training documents is larger than the cost of reviewing, reviewing these documents. But with relevance feedback or uncertainty sampling, the improvement is much faster. And at some point, the benefit of training is no longer worth the co training cost, and we start to see the cost increases. However, this is an artifact of experimenting with a finite collection. If the collection is growing faster than the pace as we review during TAR, this will be at least a flat line. Our other classes demonstrate a wider variation between the methods. Some of them have a larger variation between the 20 replicas, like the general attack in the Wikipedia data sets. And some of them, uh, and some of them have a larger variation between the iteration, such as a class of sexism in XFN data set like this. The recipient attack in Wikipedia illustrate a larger performance, a larger performance uh, differences between the sampling strategies. While relevance feedback and uncertainty sampling has their own strength and advantage, in our work, we do not intend to compare them, but simply demonstrate the applicability of TAR framework to content moderation in general. So the decision between using which of the sampling strategy depends on other kinds of business decision and whether the iterative process is planned to stop in the future. On an aggregated level, we plot the average cost over the classes and the replicas of each collection in bar charts. With only 202 training documents, the difference between random sample and the the other two sampling strategies is pretty small. However, with 8,002 training documents being labeled, the differences are larger. Uncertainty sampling on average reduced 28% of the total cost on XFM collection and 55% on the Wikipedia collection. Besides the reviewing cost, during each iteration, TAR framework also provides a higher precision for for XFM, the bar is clipped because all documents in, is found during uh, in the curse, curse class. We can see the relevance feedback provided much higher batch precision compared to the uncertainty sampling, which is perfectly intuitive since relevance feedback feeds the top ranked documents for human review in each iteration. However, no matter which sampling strategies you decided to use, they are both better than simply doing random sample. So with a higher precision in each batch, it can help the human moderator to stay focused on the subject matter and provide a more consistent judgment. It is hard to show without a user study, but has been shown in other high recall retrieval problems such as e-discovery that this indeed improves the efficiency of reviewing process. So in summary, we showed that technology-assisted review is very applicable to content moderation. It is more data and cost efficient than the traditional classification approach. So in the future, I'd like to develop a cost model for reviewing the growing or streaming collection. In this work, we only work on, we only evaluate the process based on a finite collection, but in the actual application, the documents or the content will be streaming into the system and the collection size will be growing. A proper cost model is kind of unclear at this point. So that's one of the future direction we would like to work on. 
The other one is to tailor the TAR process for the temporal variation. In most of the high recall retrieval problem, the collection is already being provided, so the content is fixed. But in content moderation, the collection will be changing and the, and the definition of inappropriate content might be shifting a little bit from event to event. So how to tailor the hard process for these kind of temporal variation is also one of the future direction we would like to work on. And thank you. That's all for my presentation. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much, Yuji. Uh, let's see if we get any question from the audience or from the online audience. Uh, David, uh, please go ahead. Hey, uh, I, I had a very interesting presentation. I was curious on the slide with the um, the different like costs graphs and like with the relevance random, etc. The the graph for the the ask FM sexism one had a lot of like up and down jitteriness to it. I was curious if you knew what was going on there. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. So most of the time it is because the sexism is very is changing in different kind of contexts. So it's kind of subtle in a lot of con in a lot of conversation. So you label one kind of conversation as sexism, but there will be some counter example in different kind of contexts where it is really it might not be sexism. And I saw some subtle is example the collection that I can tell the annotator the original annotator was struggling and like whether this one is really a sexism uh cyberbullying or not. So I think the the main two reason is it's subtle and the other one is in that might be some annotator annotation of uh artifact in the collection. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Okay so Another question from the online audience. Giorgio, please unmute yourself. Yes. Hi, Eugene. Great presentation. Could you please? Oh, OK. I, anyway, I was just saying to, to keep that slide because that was uh, my no question. Problem. Anyway, I will share that screen. Yes, thank you. So maybe I missed one bit of information. So uh, these uh, uh, plots shows, I mean, uh, I'm reading the paper. So it's the total cost for tarla alternatives to identify 80% of uh, positive documents. So does that mean that, for example, when I read on the x-axis 2000 means that you could reach 80% of positive documents? And then what does it mean to go to the 6,000 and see an increase? So haven't you already reached the 80%? So I'm not sure why you have this trend where you can, in, uh, for example, where you have your course or you start um, going up with the total cost or uh, could you just be the elaborate on that? Because I missed probably one thing. So you mean like the cost increase, like right here, that after a certain point, the total cost is increasing, right? Yes, and, and one more thing is that if you can get to the 80% with 2,000 uh, documents, what does it mean to go up to 6,000 uh, documents? Yes. Yeah. So that's actually, uh, this kind of effect is, artif is an artifact of a finite collection. So at training document 2000, if you are well, if you deploy the model to the, to the entire collection, and then we start reviewing documents from the top, then you will get to, and from the top to the point where you reach 80% recall, this is the kind of cost you're looking at. And at some point, yes, after you reach 80% recall, you are just purely reviewing documents that's unnecessary, like either that's positive or negative, like that's already exceeds 80%. So you will start to see the cost increase. But in our experiment setup, we didn't try to determine when we reached the 80%, we just continue run that to 8,000 documents. So there are two, two main reasons for that. For this specific example, we actually haven't reached 80% recall in the training documents, but the cost, the benefit of training documents is no longer that large for, uh, for reviewing those training documents. So we start to see the increase. But in the extreme case where the prevalence of the 
topic is really low, it is really it is perfectly possible where we already reach eighty percent recall in the training documents, and we should be stopping at that point. But adding one more complexity into it, if you are doing active learning and you do not have a validation set or some other random sample set aside, you actually don't know whether you have already reached eighty percent recall or not. This you will have to do some random sample either at the front or at that point to validate the progress, and that will be a another kind of cost we need to add to the total cost. So in this experiment, we didn't work, we didn't do that kind of stopping rule exploration or doing random sample up front for validation. We just continue around to 8,000 documents. Okay, gotcha. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Uh, Omar, you had a question? Okay, so I see some messages in the chat. Yes, please, uh, Jeremy, can you please unmute yourself? Hi, Eugene. Good to see you Hello. guys. Hello. Yep. Um, what a, I'm curious about aspectual recall. So when you hit that 80% recall point, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what of these different, um, you know, attacks and, and sexism and insults have you missed? Is there anything systematic, uh, you know, any kind of bias, I don't want to use the word bias, but um, any, any kind of content that that is summarily missed uh, at that 80% point. Yes, so I, I didn't do a extensive result analysis, but I did look into some example in the, the one I missed. So some of the curse uh, sexism, I cannot really tell you because most of them are already stopped out during the process. So I'm not entirely sure whether those are annotation artifacts or not. But at least for curse, that's more straightforward to distinguish. The ones, the ones I miss is really metaphor and the, the kind of things. You can tell people are trying to hide those kind of things, but if you are a human, you know that's a kind of that's a kind of attack. So yeah, those are the kind of subtle things that's really hard to distinguish. Hope that will, that have answered your question. Yep. Yep. No, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any final question? Okay, then let's thank the speaker again.